In this next lecture, we have a look at a very powerful idea called function composition. Before there are some ideas of symmetry with graphs, there are two common types of symmetry. The first is called even symmetry, even function, and that's where the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. So that means the value of the function here at x and the value of the function on the other side negative x is the same. If x is equal to f negative x. The other symmetry is called odd symmetry where the value of the function at negative x is negative of this function. So the value at x here and the value at negative x are negatives of each other. And here you will find that the line is that the graph is symmetric on the line y equals negative x. So as to draw the line equals negative x here, you find the graph is symmetric. The idea actually comes from this, this idea over here. We take a look at y equals x squared and y equals x cubed and y equals x to the fourth and y equals x to the fifth. When you look at the graphs, you'll find what the idea is. You'll find this is even and this is even and this is odd and this is odd. So the odd powers of x as such gives you odd functions and the even powers give you the even functions and you know that the x squared is symmetric around the y-axis, it's a quadratic, and the x squared and x cubed, this is x cubed over there. So x squared looks like this. x to the fourth is similar but steeper, whereas x cubed looks like this. And x to the fifth looks similar but is steeper. And they're both odd functions. So the idea comes from that kind of odd even powers. Now let's look at fun function composition. The idea here is I've got two functions, fx and gx. gx is x plus 1 and fx is x squared. And so for gx, the domain is all the real numbers and x goes to x plus 1. What I'm going to do is look at fx here, the domain is all real numbers and the range is all positives. Once I've worked out the value of x of, of y from this function g, when I've got x plus 1 over here, I want to put that through f and see what I get. What's the values I'll get out of this? So first of all, I take x, I add 1 to it, then I square it. That's the idea here. For example, if x is equal to 1, g of 1 is equal to 2. I put that now into f, and f of 2 is, g is, of, is 2 squared 4. I write this as f of g. First I apply g to 1, then I apply f. So f x on g, and I get 4. So I read this as f of g at 1, and this is what we call function composition. And so in general I say f of g this way, we apply g first, and to the result of that we apply f. So the way we can imagine this is by a function machine. I have a function here g, and x goes into there, I get g of x. And that comes out and goes into the function for f, and I get f at the point gx. So gx is what I put into this function machine for f, and so f is evaluated at gx. Now in general it doesn't go backwards in the same way, so f of g is the same as g of f. So let's take a look at the example here. I have my function machine and I put x in here and this function is x plus 1. So I get from here x plus 1. And I put that in the next function machine. And this says x squared. Let's square something. So when I put x plus 1 inside there, this says simply add 1. And this says square. So whatever I put in there, I square. So I put x plus 1 in there. So square means I must get x plus 1 squared. So if I call this my g, and I call this my f, that means f of g at x is first I add 1, then I square and I get x plus 1 squared out of it. Now, I want to look at the domain and range of f of g. So here, 
you can see when I put X into the G machine, X is all real numbers. No problems. Here I get also all real numbers. No problems. And I can evaluate this X plus one squared for all real numbers. Well, this is a square, so this must be bigger than or equal to zero. So the domain here is all real numbers. But the range here are all the reals, but bigger than or equal to zero. So you can see how things can change here. The idea here is this. I take a look at this uh, domain of, of F here. Sorry, domain of G. And I apply G to that. So I get the range of G. Now I'm going to apply F to that. So what I require is that when I apply F to what is here, the range of G, the domain of F must be contained in there. So somewhere here, will be the domain of F. So F will then give me from there something here that's now the range of F of G. So you can see that F might actually give you something bigger but I'm applying it to only this part of this here. So this is now F here. This must be the domain of F, and this is the range. Of F of G. So while I might have the domain of F is larger, domain of F may be larger. I can see what happens here is I get the range of G out of this. So G takes me here. This is the range of G. And it's the part here that is in the range of G and also in the domain of F that I can apply F to. And while the range of F may be bigger here, And this is the only part that I have to work on. So I'm going to get here something that lies in here as the domain of f of g. So there's some tricky work to be done here. Some care is required here when I move between domains and ranges. You can see this can be tricky and actually quite difficult in many examples. Let's have a look at some. We have here. I want the domain and ranges of G of F and F of G. So let's take a look at this here. F is that. So the domain of F, domain of F is the entire real set. And the range of F is Y in R. Now it's X squared plus 1. So the biggest, the smallest x squared can be zero. So this must be bigger than equal to one. Now it's g of f I'm after. So I look at f first, then I look at g. Now g is, excuse me, uh, my mistake. I'm going too fast, excuse me. The range for f is also all real numbers. I'm looking at the range for, for g there. So f is 2x plus 1. The range domains all the real numbers, and the range is all the real numbers. That's fine because for g, the domain of g is all the real numbers. And so you can see the range of f and the domain of g match up. These match up. And what's the range of G going to be? Well, the range of G here 
is y in r because this is x squared plus 1 that can be only the smallest it can be is 1 so y be given equal to 1 so what I'm getting from here is the domain of f of, of g of f I start with all the real numbers, I end up with all the real numbers, and I require all the real numbers here, here. So this is going to be the entire real set. But the range of G of F that I get here is only the numbers that are bigger than equal to 1. So you can see how this works. Let's have a look at part two here. Now I'm reversing it. I'm looking at f of g here. So we know we've got the whole thing there, the domain and range of f and g. So look at the g over here. The domain of g here is all the real numbers. And the range of G here, as we had before, is Y in R, such that Y is bigger than equal to 1. Now, the, this is for G. It's F of G I'm after, so I'm going to apply F to the result of G. Now, the domain of F here is all the real numbers, so certainly I can work out the value of f for y being given equal to 1. And if I do it, the range of f of g, what I get here is because y is bigger than equal to 1, if I look at f is 2x plus 1, so it must be y bigger than equal to 3. So here I've got domain of f of g is the real numbers, but the range goes to two things. First of all, I evaluate the function g and I get out of the real numbers bigger than equal to 1 only. And when I apply f now to this set, y bigger than equal to 1, I get 3 as the smallest, so y bigger than equal to 3. That's how this works. You can see. It takes a bit of care, and in this case, it wasn't too difficult, but in other cases, it can be quite difficult. So if I sketch what's going on here, I'm going to get here the real numbers for the second part, and I'm going to apply g to that, and I get here y bigger than equal to 1, and then I apply f here, and I get y bigger than equal to 3. Another example, root x and log x. So I'll do the same thing here. In this one, uh, the first case is looking at g of f and f of g. While we are with this, we can actually work out g of f at x, well, f is 2x plus 1. And g says square that and add 1. And if I look at the other way, f of g well g says square and add 1 and f says multiply by 2 and then add 1. So I can simplify this further without well, leaving them as it is. You can see the idea of how these are actually obtained. Look at these ones here. So again, I'll look out G of F first. I'll actually work it out in this case. F is root X. So I get log of root X here. <clears throat> now, the first thing is, I'm going to look at, this is G of F I'm looking at. 
the domain of f here is x in the reals says that x is bigger than or equal to 0. And the range for f the y is in r says that y is bigger than or equal to 0. When I look at the domain for g over here I realize that when I'm looking at logs I must have a positive number, so x must be bigger than 0, not equal to anymore. So that means between the range of f and the domain of g, I need to miss out 0. Right? So, omit 0. Which means between here and there, I need to also omit 0. And then when I get to the range of g over here, well, if I have the correct domain, which is x bigger than 0, the range of g is all the real numbers. So here you can see the domain of g of f is x in r such that x is bigger than 0. So while I can look out f x 0, I can't work out g at 0, so I need to omit 0 because that then way, that way the 0 doesn't appear in the range of f. And the range of g over f is y in r. That's all there is. Now, if you look at the function itself, you realize it's log of root x. So the log part here, to actually work out log here, means the x root x must be bigger than zero, and that implies that x must be bigger than zero. I can get the range directly by looking at it that way. And of course, again, if I look at the values over here, over here log is all the values negative to, to positive the whole real line. So I can figure it out that way as well. And that's also useful. Part 2 then, let's have a look at this. I want now f of g. So f of g here is, well, it's f of g is log x. And so it's square root of log x. So for the domain here, I need the square root. I think I'm taking the square root of to be positive. Log x must be bigger than or equal to zero. And so log x, log of one is zero, so it must be bigger than equal to one. Anything less than one, the log is negative. So here the domain is x bigger than or equal to one. And if I have that, then the range of f of g, what is the square root of something? So log x, the smallest is going to be 0. So here this is going to be y bigger than or equal to 0. So to put the thing formally, That's how I get it. Very much simpler. So let's have a look at it again. My function is log of root x. Log of root x. Log x is defined for all positive numbers. But the values it takes are all real numbers. The square root means that the log must be bigger than or equal to zero. The square root I can only expect for numbers bigger than or equal to zero. So that means log x is bigger than or equal to 0, and that's the case when x is bigger than or equal to 1. 
If I actually put in x bigger than or equal to 1 here, then the numbers that I get here uh, for log is bigger than or equal to 0, and logs far, and the square root of that will be something bigger than or equal to 0. So I can look at those things and work out the domain and ranges from there. Have a good look at that example. It's a difficult example to look at. In the next lecture, we look at inverse functions.